Rodney, the Prime Minister's called the election. She said that it's all about trust. What have you got to say about that? Well, the election can't come quick enough. Uh, Kiwis are fed up with this nanny state Clark Peters government, and recently it's become a highly unprincipled one. It's fantastic that Helen Clark's going to campaign on trust, because how can you trust her or Winston Peters? The whole country knows that Winston Peters hasn't been telling the truth, and Helen Clark's backing him. Uh, if you want to trust people, they've actually got to tell the truth. Helen Clark hasn't been, nor is Winston Peters. I'm wondering whether um, the election being about trust is actually about the Spencer Trust, or any other trust that she may know about. Well, of course, we've got the Spencer Trust, and the Serious Ford Office are investigating that. Um, I doubt their investigations will be finished before the election, but um, Helen Clark campaigning on trust, it's a joke. And uh, is ACT all ready to fight that election? We've been ready since we were born. Um, this is going to be a fantastic election. There's a huge mood for change. Uh, what National is saying is vote for us and you'll get a change of government. Uh, what we want is a government of change. That means party vote act. That's the only way we'll actually get a change of policies and a change of direction. What the Kiwis have got to understand is that what we're doing now isn't working. Uh, the only way to change that is to give your party vote to act. And the feedback that you've had from the electorate on the pledge card that, that act has? People love the 20 point plan, but what we've got to explain to them is MMP, um, so that they've got two ticks. Apart from Epsom, they should vote for the national candidate. Everywhere else, they should give their uh, party vote to ACT and Epsom. We want both votes. Right, and uh, and, and confident of the polls and getting uh, over 5% for ACT? Certainly what we're aiming for. Um, and what we're picking up is that people want a change of government, but they also want a change of direction. And we need to explain MMP and say, well, the way to get that is to give your party vote to ACT. And of course, we can assure them this time round that the good people of Epsom are going to re-elect me. And that means that every party vote for ACT will count. And I mean, why would you vote for national campaigning on Labour's policies? Um, that's ridiculous. If we stick with the same policies, we'll get the same results. You know, that means crime-ridden streets, that means a desultory economy, and that means falling ever further behind the rest of the world, in particular Australia. Uh, we've got to do better than that. We don't want to be Australia's sort of poor little cousin. We want to actually match them and beat them. Um, there's talks about coalitions and various positions, and there's lo all likelihood that the Maori Party will have seven, uh, seven seats um, at the negotiating table. How well do you think ACT can work with the Maori Party, and how well do you think a national ACT Maori coalition would work? Well, that's up to the Maori Party. We've always worked well with the Maori Party, and you know, we sit beside Tariana, and I've got huge respect for her. And when we've discussed um, social policy, health, education, welfare, there's a large degree of congruence between what ACT is saying and what the Maori Party is saying. We disagree with them about affirmative action. They think affirmative action is needed so Maori play catch up. We think actually affirmative action is what holds Maori back, so we agree to disagree on that. But I think it would be great to have the Maori Party in, um, simply because if we're going to attend to the problems of welfare, um, the Maori leadership need to take the lead on it, not, not everyone else. And um, But that'll be up to them. Um, I suspect they wanting to stay out of any coalition and um, sort of give their support on a policy by policy basis just because them going with National, them going with Labour, I think it's going to make it hard for them. So I think realistically what we're looking to is a National Act government uh, versus a Labour Green opposition. I think a Labour Green uh, opposition is unelectable and uh, with the Maori Party either in or out. I noticed you said a, a Labour Green uh, coalition, you're not uh, including New Zealand First in there. No, I think New Zealand First are toast because the one thing they've campaigned on they've been shown not to be able to deliver on, which is, you know, honesty and integrity. Um, they've failed totally. Uh, it's been my role to expose that, but not to persecute them because, you know, Winston's great at playing the victim. So what I've done is just been carefully exposing uh, the truth of what's gone on with New Zealand First. There's still a lot more to come. And of course, it's a uh, Exposing the truth on New Zealand First exposes not just the dishonesty of Winston Peters, but the dishonesty of Helen Clark and the Labour government. I've also been careful not to give Winston Peters the theatre and the audience that he wants, because um, 
So I haven't bashed him up in Parliament because, you know, he'd like nothing more than to play the victim. So I haven't given him that opportunity. I've just dealt the facts cold and hard. I've heard you mention to various media commentators that you're saddened by the whole shenanigans surrounding New Zealand First and Winston Peters. I am because it goes against basic Kiwi values. We actually are honest people and we believe in telling the truth and not dissembling and being tricky. And we're also a people that show gratitude to people's generosity. And the idea that Owen Glenn has been so generous to New Zealand and to the Labour Party and to New Zealand First and then to be trashed, that saddens me because it reflects on all of us because this is our government doing it. Winston Peters is part of the government, Helen Clark's part of the government, Michael Cullen's part of the government and they represent us. And it's shocking to see the level of dishonesty and dissembling and then the ingratitude of these people towards Owen Glenn. I was sickened when they spurned and shunned him when he opened the business school at the university. I mean, he's a guy who's given seven and a half million dollars and they couldn't even give him a com common courtesy. They had to set that bobber boy Trevor Mallard to keep him from, you know, getting close to Helen Clark. That's after giving the university seven and a half million dollars, cutting the ribbon and giving half a million to Labour Party, another hundred thousand dollar loan, and on Mike Williams' say so, another hundred thousand dollars to New Zealand first. It's disgusting. He gave us $500 to act, we'd look after him. Can, okay, so Helen Clark called the election on trust. You're good with that. Oh, it's very clear. Uh, Party Vote Act. People have got two votes. Uh, they can give their, their electorate vote, apart from an Epsom, uh, to say a good national candidate. And then they've got their party vote. Well, if they vote for the National Party, what they'll get is basically Helen Clark's policies, because that's what National's campaigning on. Or they can vote for the 20-point plan, they can vote for Act, they can vote for a, a government of change, and that's how I'm going to be pitching it. They should be giving their party vote to act. You've got two votes, make them count. And if you get over 5%, let's say you get 5%, how mm -hmm. many MPs does that give act? Oh, that'll give us, you know, seven or so. And seven will allow you to contribute to a, to a cabinet of a Oh, seven would give us a, a couple of seats around the cabinet table, and what that'll mean is it will get our ideas, our 20-point plan around the cabinet table being discussed every week. And I mean, that's what I notice about our parliament and about our government. Actually, it's devoid of ideas, it's devoid of ambition, it's devoid of vision about where the country can be in 10, 15, 20 years we need to do now to get to where we want to be. That's what I love about Roger Douglas, because he is a man of that vision and that ambition. And he certainly lifted my sights. What we need to do is lift the whole country's sights. Great. Thanks, Rodney. Thank you, Whale Oil. Great blog. Thank you.